What's going on everyone and welcome back to Chasing Sunsets. Let's continue. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, check out the playlist so you can check out where we are in the story and let's continue. Polygene the next morning. Arriving five minutes ahead of schedule, you find Lisa hard at work already. What the? How the hell do you always beat me here? First rule of business, always be 15 minutes early. But you didn't know when I would get here. Did you? Lisa just stares back at you with an enigmatic smile. All the effective people know where they need to be and make it so. Yeah, well, highly irritable people have a low tolerance for bullshit. Where's Jay? She's on assignment for George, but you already knew that. Sit. Please God, not budget forecasting again. Bored already, boss? Wait until we talk about employee benefits vendor selection. I have a headache in my eye. <laughs> Want to hear a secret? Sure. Delegate. Surround yourself with people who can deliver and leave the boring stuff to them. Best lesson ever. Budget forecasting will thrive in your capable hands. Oh, hell no. You can't hand off responsibility until you understand it completely. Ugh. <laughs> but you and Jay have exceeded expectations lately, so we could switch things up a bit. What do you mean? Your time abroad. You learned a lot of things that apply directly to this job. They literally have nothing in common. They have everything in common. Listen closely. You traveled in countries where you didn't know the law or even the social code. You figured out how to thrive in spite of your soft upbringing, how to adapt. I guess. Negotiation in business is no different than convincing a dirty cop not to throw you in jail. The stakes and languages are different, but the same skill set and instinct determine the outcome. As Lisa talks, you notice she's dressed a little more provocatively than usual. She's always sexy in a mean teacher sort of way, but she's on a whole other level today. Alex, are you still with me? Uh, right, instincts. <laughs> Lisa's eyes narrow as she realizes the source of your distraction. See something you like? Rather than the expected outrage, her voice exudes a subtle suggestiveness. Uh, no, I mean... It's just, you look nice today is all, was thinking about something else. You look nice today. Of course I do. I want to look good for you. What? Uh-huh. Oh. Lisa moves sinuously to your side of your mother's desk and straddles you. I wasn't sure you'd notice. This is a joke, right? Oh god, no. These past few weeks, getting to know you better. How you jumped without hesitation into the ocean when Jay fell overboard. Her voice takes on a husky tone as her face inches closer and closer to yours. Makes me think you might just be the sort of guy who finally tames me. Issa grinds lightly against you and it doesn't feel like she's wearing underwear. This is very unexpected. Leaning forward, Lisa nibbles on your playful ear. Well, playfully on your ear. Want to see if that lock on storage is still broken? You suddenly realize your thing is seconds away from inflating like a balloon animal into Lisa's crotch. <laughs> uh, Lisa? A split second before your renegade rats you out, Lisa giggles and hops off. So, why didn't you seize that opportunity? If I'm being honest? Lisa just smiles as if she knows what you're going to say next. It just seemed too good to be true that a woman like you'd be into me. Lisa's eyes widen briefly in surprise before the poker faces back. That didn't feel like it was entirely an act, and she reacted to praise. In other words, you trusted your instincts. Yes. Sitting back down, Lisa looks at you intently. You're almost fated to be your own worst enemy. 
You are young, very handsome, and about to become extremely wealthy. A volatile combination. Wait, did you just say I'm handsome? Focus, Alex. Nearly everyone around you will have an agenda. Never lose sight of that. This sounds personal to her. She wants to make sure I don't repeat a mistake she made. In your position, you must always be two steps ahead. Be frugal with your trust. Otherwise, some con artist will weasel into your dojo and burn it down around you. Does nearly everyone include you? You should treat me like it does until it's no longer a question. And if I already know how to separate simple fun from responsibility and duty, let's try putting her on the defensive for once. Then I might think I found a potential playmate. Now, where were we? Storage A, I think. <laughs> Lisa looks at you appraisingly for a moment before smirking at you. Nice try. As gratifying as demonstrating some of my more specialized skills for you sounds, I didn't get to where I am by being the meat in a split roast between my bosses. And here I thought you were all work and no play. It doesn't take a rocket science to figure out that Jay is why you pulled the post-graduation stunt. If Tanaka or Chapman were my competition, I wouldn't even relish the challenge. Oh, I would even relish the challenge. But that girl has been planning to play ball with you since before she even had grass on her field. Oof. <laughs> wow. Thank you for that therapy-inducing insight. I have to be a special kind of stupid to put myself in her way. Good talk. We done? Wait a minute. You were testing me! Is it wrong that I'm a little sad you passed? I don't know if I could have turned you down. Oh, you're gonna pay for that. Oh, absolutely. But not today. Right now, I need to go to the labs to figure out why Mallory and Sophie aren't returning my texts. Can't remember the last time I got played like that. I'm legitimately impressed. <laughs> Excellent. Apu Beach. Mallory gazes across the ocean, lost in thought. I'll bet the good doctor has told everyone by now. They all know what you are. Hey, need a beer? Hmm. Oh, hi. No, I'm fine. Just thinking. I've seen you here every day this week. That's a lot of thinking. Drinking some Heineken? I guess it is. <laughs> Which means you could probably use a beer. You know what? Why not? I mean, Annie, by the way. Mallory. Mallory turns to accept the beer with a smile and her fo face goes pale. Oh, she got the same eyes. Something wrong? Your eyes. What about them? Annie thrusts the open beer towards Mallory like it's a baton in a relay. You gonna drink or what? Mallory accepts the bottle numbly while still staring transfixed at Annie. Don't even think about it. You can never be like her. Uh, do you want me to leave you alone? I didn't want to make it awkward. Although it's kind of weird to accept the drink, but not the company. Mara looks down at her beer in embarrassment. Kind of weird, doesn't even scratch your surface. You're lucky I even came back. I'm sorry, he's caught me by surprise. What, my eyes? Yeah, I guess you're not the first Reaction I've had like that. I like him. Pretty unique if you ask me. Standing out doesn't seem to be a problem for you, Annie. Well, having different colored eyes certainly helps. Cheers! And he clings her bottle against Mallory's, and both women drink. Don't listen to her. I'm all you have left now that you killed your disabled friend. It's so beautiful here, and so blad home. I don't want to leave. I suppose if you have to be miserable, there are worse places to do it. Miserable? Gotta be a boy then. It's a lot of things. Damn. Well, divide and conquer then. What do you mean? Deal with what you can, bit by bit, and fuck the rest. Usually works for me. If only you were that easy. Hey, you can't fix everything. I know that from first-hand experience. What could you throw in the bucket bucket right now if you wanted to? 
Arnie looks into Annie's eager face and feels something click inside of her. You're right, Dad. You're all I have left, of my self-loathing. Reaching towards her face, she hesitantly removes her contact lenses. Wait, what do you think you're doing? I can fuck it to this. Shit, you're just like me. Why were you even hiding that? Stop, you need those. You need me. Ah, no. Furiously, Mallory tosses the tinted lenses into the water. Fuck off, daddy. Maybe I just need the right person to come along and guide me to the same question. I bought beer too, don't forget that. Mallory takes a long pull off her beer before removing Bandit's necklace from her pocket. Feels different this time. Devin's gone, he's really gone. That you did, Annie. Deal with what I can, fuck the rest. You're not gonna throw that in the ocean too, are you? That's mom, Peanut, Alex, and dad. Just one goodbye left. I'm guessing that locket's gonna be harder to replace than those contacts. Doesn't matter. Just want to stop hurting. Do you think getting rid of it will stop the pain? I don't know. I guess not. Well, then leave it in the deal with it pile until you're sure. Tomorrow is a whole new day. Anyway, let's ch it's Checo time. It's nice meeting you, Mallory. Annie stands with a friendly smile and makes to leave. Hey, Annie. Yeah. Thanks. Anytime. Ooh, back in the harbor. Good afternoon, Sophie. George sent me. It's impatient for an update on Miss Cohen. Cohen? So you are avoiding him. Well, that can't be good news. And Mallory's ghosting me too. What's going on, Sophie? Sophie stands hurried as if late for a meeting. I don't have time for this right now. Come back this afternoon and we'll talk. Whatever's going on, it'll be easier for dealing with it as a team. Sophie hesitates and looks at you appraisingly. Very well. Amanda should be conscious by now, but she's not. Her body responded to the treatment like the virus that it is, and she spiked a high fever. Do you think that's why she hasn't woken up? I simply don't know. I believe we mitigated her fever in time, but each case is unique. If there is no improvement when I have returned, we must transfer her to a proper hospital. We knew this was always a risk. How, is Ma How has Mallory handled it? She's dealing with a lot right now. This isn't what she needed on top of... On top of what? The no-nonsense woman glances towards the door with obvious impatience. That is a conversation for the two of you. Now, if you excuse me. Can I stay with Amanda? Yes, of course. I don't need to tell you not to touch anything. You're hoping to catch Miss Chapman. Winning here is your best bet anyway. As you enter Amanda's alcove, she seems to be sound asleep. So, you're Amanda. A friend who kept Mallory together. I hope someday you'll see how hard she tried to return the favor. <laughs> Only really? There is no Amanda. Only Zool. <laughs> Fuck. Um. <laughs> the power of Christ compels you. I do think. <laughs> oh, fuck. Good old Ghostbusters. Are you the key master? <laughs> And you're fucking with me, aren't you? Amanda makes a valiant effort to maintain a deadpan expression. <laughs> oh my god, you should have seen your face. <laughs> my sides. Blown the fuck out. I need new sides. <laughs> you made some time in indignant silence for her to regain control of herself. Ah, uh, such a good go Ghostbusters reference. You don't hear about Zul very often anymore. So, you must be the boy Mallory has been talking about. Alex? Uh-huh. And you must be lying in wait to make your first visitor shit himself. For 23,740 seconds. I smell no evidence of auto-defecation. <laughs> that sounds disgusting and oddly specific. You know, a lot of people have been worried about you. I know. 
Mallory was actually here when I woke up, but I needed time to think. So the treatment worked. You seem fine-ish. I'm a long wing for fine-ish. You can say that again. My heart still feels like it's at a rave. I've been processing how I've changed. You're still the same person you were when you got here. That is demonstrably true, untrue. When I arrived, my mind worked very differently. I experienced the world through the filter of savantism and ret. Now they're gone. That's good, right? It's not quite that simple. Imagine you had an eidetic mind. Every memory was viewed through a pair of missing glasses that could never be replaced. So your memory is gone? No, but it has context I often cannot connect to. Distorted or unintelligible. I just noticed you don't use contractions. Perhaps my treatment exchanged savantism for OCD. Thanks for that, by the way. <laughs> I will outlaw contractions as a form of hate speech when I inevitably rule the world. What? <laughs> Come on, dude, don't be so gullible. You're fucking with me again. Sadly, I'm not fucking with anyone today. I believe I have UTI. Oh, wow. Now my wheel has. Let me call Sophie or Jay. Ah, uh, now I understand. I have a catheter inserted since I was unconscious for... Uh, two weeks? Not a fan. Will you remove it for me, Alex? You <laughs> stop man that she begins untying her waistband of her scrubs. Hold up. Let me call Dr. Allard. She can help you. Please, I look forward to hearing you explain why you refuse to remove my pants. Very funny. I'm really the last person you should be talking to right now. It was by design. I spoke to you first for a reason. I don't understand. Listen, Alex. Mallory has learned something that has her doubting her sense of self. Don't take this the wrong way, but have you met Mallory? That's sort of her thing. No, this is entirely different. Based on a misunderstanding, she will need our help to see the truth. Because Sophie ran her DNA? I'm not sure how either of us can help her with that. For obvious reasons, I've been forced to reevaluate my own personhood. Mallory must do the same. And one of the reasons it matters to her is because of its implications of her relationship with you. Oh, I see. So there is a genetic connection. She has been avoiding you, correct? Or seems like it. Text her and tell her I'm awake. She will come. Call Mallory, call Sophie. And we're going to make that decision in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I do love her introduction, how she went and referenced the Ghostbusters movie. That's good. I like it. Nice touch. Um, she seems like an interesting character. Definitely looking forward to seeing more of her if she's in it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you all in the next one.